Hello and welcome, I am King's Cree from MMLplay.com and this is the top 5 best obscure indie games of 2015. In this list you'll find underrated titles from the indie game Steam category with a full release within the last 9 months or so, which coincidentally are the best months for indie games. Now these titles haven't got much press and can really use some loving. Without further ado, Number 5, Fingered. Well, with a name like that, you have got my attention. The gist of this game is that it's like a really gross guess who. Yes, the kids game. You're given a few hints which will help you identify who the criminal might be, and straight after the expert testimony of your hint giver, they will be sent straight to the electric chair. Guilty or not. The whole aesthetic is strange and uncomfortable, and often gross with a little bit of insanity. Theme-wise, I'm almost certain there's some kind of social commentary going on here. More than just the eyewitness accounts being enough for state killings, which doesn't really happen, more like the game is forcing you to make assumptions about strange people. For example, you have to find someone who is both tall and fat, and then single out the rest. Even more than that, you have to find someone who doesn't look like they bathe or maybe they have money. Oftentimes, the actual crook isn't even like the person described, despite the eyewitness being positive, which the game claims is 100% accurate. I definitely smell some social commentary, but then again, I could just be wrong and it's a dumb game with dumb aesthetics, with dumb gameplay, but it's kind of a trip. <laughs> 6 out of 10. Number 4, Hacknet. Hacknet is a strange game indeed, if you could even call it a game. It's more like a hacking simulator. It's definitely a far cry from the shows like NCIS, where they pound their fist on the keyboard followed by a, I'm in. Here you actually type in commands to tell the computer to do your bidding, like RM star to delete logs or connecting to computers through your IP address. Admittedly, I don't know if any of what you're doing is even remotely correct, but I certainly felt like a cyber criminal. But the actual progressing through the game is kind of a pain. It's also incredibly convoluted. The RM command deletes files, right? So why can't that kill a file executing command? You also must correct any syntax errors that you have, and otherwise there are points in this game where you, you'll just come to a, a dead stop with no idea what to do. My breaking point was trying to hack into some dude's computer, but not knowing at all how to do so. Even a minor hint, anything, that would help to push me in the right direction would have been awesome. Going on in the background is some kind of scandal or something, which is actually pretty interesting. It was pretty cheesy, but it was definitely interesting. The overall presentation and handling is all top notch. I just wish there's a little bit more guidance on how these systems work and the difference or even the definition of certain terms and why they are like they are. 7 out of 10. Number 3, Reassembly. This one is a tricky one to judge, but I know for a fact that there is something great here. I say it's tricky because this game just doesn't feel finished. It feels more akin to like an alpha game. It's like someone created this and then just threw it out there without the necessary polish it needs. On top of everything, it looks magnificent. Space battles look amazing with the ships and bullets flying every which way. And you can zoom all the way out for a more tactical view, or you can zoom all the way in for an awesome look at that ship that you made yourself. On that note, the awesome ship that you can make is from scratch with endless possibilities because you decide where everything goes. From whole pieces to deflect oncoming bullets are 10 turrets for that massive firepower. Unfortunately, a lot of people, myself included, just won't have the patience to try and make it work. Right into the menu, the game just drops you in for you to figure everything out. The more complicated and unintuitive a process, the more you need to explain it. It's a really cool concept, just poor execution. On the actual map, you'll have a certain list of objectives to complete, that is, if you can actually find anything. The minimap is no help at all, and everything in the world just looks so similar, despite looking pretty. Most of my playing time was just cruising around town looking for fights. Looking foolish is the only looking I was doing anyway. Moving around the world is a pain. Instead of accurate second-by-second -second positioning, you must learn to live with the complicated forces of space. Luckily, there are lots of wide open spaces, and God forbid there are any asteroid fields, you might as well give up. Combat isn't much better. I can shoot another ship for days, but I can't tell if I destroyed or even hit something else. There are no indications or sounds giving you any information back. 
Like I said before, it is a brilliant game underneath. It just needs that polish. Space Shooter fans will definitely want to check this out, but I would give it a 7 out of 10. Number 2, Wonderlust. Begin your adventure anew in a fairly reminiscent setting. Yes, Wonderlust doesn't attempt to hide the fact that it leans on outdated visuals and mechanics, but their presentation is everything. Firstly, the general aesthetic isn't incredible, but it does do its job nicely. Well-drawn, robust characters and tile sets flood this colorful world. Characters and menus are simply done, but come with a nice set of animations. Well-composed, adventurous music inspires questing, and overall, you have a very upbeat, cheerful game. There are customization options of plenty in the whole world to explore. Interestingly enough, even the objectives are surprisingly different from most games of this kind of theme. Soon after starting the game, I was tasked with waiting until sundown to dispel some wolves. And by dispel, I mean with my blade, that is. A problem, however, is that I wasn't sure I actually completed the quest. Upon returning to the quest giver, he just wanted to give me more quests. Which is fine, but I want the reward from the first one. Nonetheless, I gained a whole bunch of experience and leveled up my character in a few different ways. Namely, health. I wasn't terribly impressed with anything in particular, but it was a fine experience. 8 out of 10. Number 1. Feist. Feist is the hidden gem I was hoping to find for this list. Much like the critically acclaimed Limbo, you move from left to right on a two-day plane. Along the way, pick up items and use them in a variety of different ways like making an impromptu platform to jump on, or as a weapon to dispatch deadly foes. Interestingly enough, enemies will interact with other enemies, more than just occupying the same space. Like, a certain creature in particular will jump up and swat at the wasp overhead. In tense situations with a keen eye and swift maneuvering, you can even make the enemies hit one another. Also, the interaction between the player and the environment is delightful, like the bear-looking beast, for example. Instead of just hitting you back, sometimes he'll grab you and throw you like you're nothing. It's fabulous. I love it. Similar to Dark Souls, there are a few sequences where you will probably die at least once, and many of them you'll die a whole bunch of times. A trap or enemy you didn't see will surprise and kill you, or simply taking down that boss creature requires a few elements to line up nicely. Generally, I liked the subtle difficulty, but at times it felt like a bit too much for a game I thought to be an atmospheric platformer. At times, I questioned if this game really knew what it wanted to be. An uncommon feature these days is allowing players to absorb the information in the game world and then presenting a problem with the player having the complete toolset, and then it's up to you to find the solution. A lot of mobile games will flash an on-screen prompt when you complete a puzzle, or even the Secret Legend of Zelda series will play a tune. Here, however, you are greeted with nothing. The hostile environment doesn't reward puzzle solvers, it requires it. It's such a strange feeling to not get that rush of endorphins from the on-screen prompt or something like that upon completing something tough. It's tranquil. It's nice. Other strange mechanics are also included, like taking down a flying wasp will warrant picking it up and using it as a weapon. How freaking cool is that? The whole world just feels so organic and brought to life with all these interwoven characteristics. True, it does have rather simple gameplay mechanics, but this game really shines when it comes to the atmosphere. Dark and brooding forests give you a feeling of dreadful loneliness, like the entire world is out to get you. Well, not you in particular, you're no one. You're just a little insect, an insect against the world. The sound design in particular is fantastic. Slight rustling of nearby trees sound crisp and realistic, while the pitter-patter of your creature steps are innocent and quiet. Playing somberly in the background is the music, which is also excellent and superbly theme-fitting. It is an absolutely excellent game that unfortunately got passed over for any major Let's Players or gaming press outlets, and it is truly a diamond hidden in the rough. If you're going to take away anything from this list, it should be to try or at least check out this game. 9 out of 10. Once again, I have been Keen's Gree with MMOplay.com. I hope you enjoyed this list. We are definitely looking to make more lists. If you have any ideas, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.